everybody, Zach again, NewToTorah.com, coming in making a video for you today. I have heard lots of arguments from Christians who claim that the Sabbath has been done away with, and they usually give me a certain number of verses to prove their point. Usually it's Colossians 2, or you know 14 and 16, or Romans 14, verse 5, and a few others. But recently I heard an argument from a pastor who used a different verse or set of verses that I had not heard before, and we'll get into that today. But she makes a reference, basically this is all surrounding Colossians 2, 14 and 16, so we have to make reference to that, and I want to bring it up. I've already done an entire video on Colossians uh, second chapter, uh, verse 14 and 16. So I'll link that in the cards above up there, and uh, link in the description below if you want to watch that full video uh, talking about those verses in particular in detail. But let's go ahead and go to our first clip, and then we'll jump into it. And you can see how Paul is having to give instructions right back there in our uh, passage out of Colossians, where he's trying to tell them that Jesus, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, trying to tell us these things have been done away with. And so this is the argument by Christians to say, verse 14 in Colossians chapter 2 is making it, clear that this is done away with. Let's read the verse. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Does, it, does this say, ladies and gentlemen, that the law is done away with? That the law was nailed to the cross? No. It says the ordinances that were against us. See, because here's, here's a modern day example. When you run through a red light in traffic and a cop pulls you over, he gives you a ticket of an ordinance violation. See, it's an ordinance violation. Doesn't, it's not the ordinance. So you have this violation and you have to go to court, usually in the old days. Nowadays, everything's online probably. You can just mail in your fine or whatever. But used to, you have to go to court and you had to stand up when it was your turn and you, you had to pay your fine. Let's just say, for example, and go with me on this, that you can't pay your fine. Someone you don't even know stands up in the back of the courtroom and says, Your Honor, I'll pay that fine for him. And because you have overwhelming gratitude of this complete stranger paying a fine that you couldn't pay, you express your thank you, and then you go out, you leave the court, now free from the law because the ordinance violation has been taken out of the way, and you try not to run through red lights anymore. Does that make sense? See, the law was not taken out of the way. The ordinance violations that we're all guilty of were taken out of the way. The fines were paid that we could not pay. And people twist that verse to make it sound like the law has done away with when it says nothing of the sort. The violations that we are guilty of have been taken out of the way. The ordinance violations have been, the tickets have been nailed to the cross. All right, now, verse 16, let's read this. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. And in my video, I make the point crystal clear that we're talking about, okay, Colossa, which is like a stone's throw away from the temple of Diana. This is a pagan culture, a pagan nation full of pagan people who worship pagan false gods made of wood and stone. And they have their own feast days. That's why in Leviticus 23, the second verse, he says, these are my feast. Because the pagans, they have all their other feasts for their gods. But see, the one true God, he has his own feast. He has his own ways of worship. And so we are to do it that way. And see, when they're in Colossa, they are, they are surrounded by a bunch of pagan people who are looking at them like they're idiots because they're keeping these strange Sabbath days. They're keeping these strange food laws. They're keeping these strange feast days that they've never heard of. This is 800 miles away from Jerusalem. I make the point in that video. So if you want more information, go to the video. You can watch it. I, I really go down deep in it. I go into detail. It's a fun video. It's not that long. Check it out if you want more information on um. Colossa 2, for Colossians 2, 14 and 16. It has nothing to do with don't let anyone judge you for not keeping them. No, don't let anyone judge you for keeping them. They're in the midst of a bunch of pagans. Okay, now moving on to our next clip. So Exodus 31 from verse 13 onward. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths, plural, you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. And you know that Moses upheld that 
to the T. If you remember back in Numbers, there was a man out there gathering wood on the Sabbath, and they brought him and detained him to Aaron and Moses, asking what they should do, and Moses said, he's got to be put to death for gathering wood on the Sabbath. Okay, then. Did, did, did you just roll your eyes at a commandment that the God, the God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob gave Moses? Did, did you just do that? I'm curious, because it looks like you did that. <laughs> it, everyone blames Moses. Moses, these are the words of Moses, don't you know? This is, this is a God, this is just Moses. Moses. Moses killed this man gathering for gathering wood on the Sabbath. All he was doing was gathering some wood, and he killed him for it. No, 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 no. Moses said, hold on, let me go check. And he goes to the creator of heaven and earth and asks him, and the creator of heaven and earth said, he will die. Obviously, our God keeps the Sabbath and takes it seriously. <laughs> and to roll your eyes at that. Let's keep going. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. But here's the key to this whole text. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Are you the children of Israel? I don't know. I'm not sure about that. This pastor probably has not read Romans chapter 11. Let's read a couple of verses. For I would not, brothers, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. So all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So before this, Paul has this whole story in the verses prior talking about a wild olive tree whose branches were broken off and grafted into the cultivated olive tree. You see, that's Israel. Israel was this wild olive tree that went wild into the nations. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 3 was divorced from God. And he's being brought back in, grafted in again. That's what the verse says. Let's read it. And they also, who's they? Israel. Israel, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if you were cut off out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to, into nature, into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? He's talking about Israel. See, folks, you are Israel. And this is backed up also by his letter in Ephesians. Let's look at that. Wherefore, remember that you, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, see, you were in times past a Gentile. You're not anymore. You were a Gentile in times past. That at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you, you know, Israel, who are sometimes far off, are made near by the blood of Christ. See, this is Israel. In that time past when you were Gentiles in the flesh, you know, and, and you, were, uh, uh, you were strangers without the covenants of promise, you know, back then. But see, now you're, you're made near. Near to what? Israel, the commonwealth of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, if you worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob is... His, had his name changed to Israel. That means if you worship the God of Israel, you are Israel. And I think everyone in the, within the sound of my voice would agree that we worship the God of Israel, Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, Jacob. If you do, then you're Israel. That's what you are. And you're made near. You're now part of the commonwealth of Israel. And so when you're part of the commonwealth of Israel, the nation of Israel, not the physical nation, no, 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 not the one in 1948. I'm talking about the commonwealth of Israel in the spiritual realm. If you're part of that, then you have a set of rules. Just like you would if you went to any country and became part of that country. There are countries out there in the world today that will accept you as a citizen. All you do is apply, maybe pay, a, pay some money or whatever. But then once you become part of that nation, you're expected to follow the rules of that nation. That's what Ruth said. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Well, to do that, you have to do what they do 
as that people. Okay, you can't do something different because that's not what they do. And so God has this rule, set of rules. It's not that hard. It's like 613 commandments. I make this point often on my channel. It's not that hard. As a man, a husband, a father, there's only about 200 commandments that apply to me. In America today, there's over 4 million plus laws that apply to Americans. We can't even keep count. And we don't even know how many laws there are passed in America today because we've lost count. There's no way to calculate it. So what's easier? Following 200 laws that apply to me as a man, husband, and a father or 4 million plus laws as an American? Be honest and leave a comment below. <laughs> Insane. But let's go ahead and continue. But what I'm saying to you is it says quite clearly and quite plainly right there that he's saying this covenant is for a people that he chose that was set apart. So that's your first clue maybe that uh, we should take note of these things, who they are directed towards. Yeah, they're directed towards a set apart, peculiar people. He says, you will be a peculiar treasure unto me. You are peculiar. Why are you peculiar? Because see, you do things that the rest of the world does not do. You keep a seventh day Sabbath. You keep these feast days. You don't eat all the things that these other peoples eat. You don't celebrate. You don't worship, you know, me the way the rest of the world worships their gods. You're peculiar. Anyone in the world should look at you and be like, you know what? You're different. That's what you should be. And in fact, this is held up not only in the Old Testament over and over again, where it talks about God's peculiar people, but also in the New Testament. Let's read those verses. Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, meaning lawlessness, and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Hmm. Peculiar. Hmm. A set-apart people. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So yeah, a set apart people. You're to be set apart. See, to be, to be set apart, there has to be another group of people that you're set apart from. If you're peculiar, there has to be a reason why you're peculiar because you're different than everyone else. And so yeah, this is for Israel. You are Israel. Israel is to be a set apart, peculiar people. Even in the New Testament, you are peculiar. You're strange. You're not normal. You do things weird. Why do you do these weird things? It's because you're peculiar. And God calls you to be peculiar. We'll leave it at that. Go home. Read your Bible. Thanks.